welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Puerto. Name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather celebrating the Lord's love for us, we, we also bring to mind our hurts, our wounds, the things in our life that need God's healing or His forgiveness. We came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to bind up our wounds and forgive our sin. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You came that we might have a new and abundant life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sin and bring us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. In those days, the Lord spoke to Ahaz. Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be as deep as shale or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask and I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear then, O house of David. Is it too little for you, too weary men, that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call him Emmanuel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let the Lord enter. He is the King of glory. Let the Lord He is the King of glory. The Lord's is the earth and its fullness, the world and all who dwell in it. It is He who set it on the seas, on the rivers He made it firm. Let the Lord enter. He is the King of glory. Who shall climb the mountain of the Lord? Who shall stand in His holy place? the clean of hands and pure of heart, whose soul is not set on vain things. Let, Let the Lord, Lord enter. He is the King, King of glory. Blessings from the Lord shall he receive, and right reward from the God who saves him. Such are the people who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Let, Let the Lord, Lord enter. He, he is the King, King of glory. glory. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel concerning his son, who was descended from David, according to the flesh, and designated son of God in power, according to the spirit of holiness, by his resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith 
for the sake of his name among the nations, including yourselves who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all God's beloved in Rome, who are called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. God is with us. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. The birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child of the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to send her away quietly. But as he considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for well, he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel had commanded him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There are two parallel annunciation stories in the gospel. One is to Mary, and the other is to Zechariah, the husband of Elizabeth and the father of John the Baptist. The angel of the Lord appeared to Zechariah, and he disbelieved God's word and God's promise. And so he was struck deaf and mute. The angel of the Lord appeared to Mary, and she believed God's word and said yes to God. Her yes was the beginning of all and everything that would happen to her during the rest of her life. I think it's useful for us to compare these two responses. Zechariah said, How shall I know this? I'm an old man and my wife is advanced in years. Mary says, How can this be? For I have no relations with the man. Zechariah's reply, while it's realistic, is also quite insulting. He's saying to the angel, Give me some reason to believe what you are saying. Just to hear you, though the messenger of God, say it is not enough for me. Well, this kind of doubt should never have occurred to him. God's voice had already spoken love into his heart throughout his whole life. His trust in God should have been the deepest meaning of his existence. In this sense, we can say that Zechariah was already deaf and mute when the angel spoke to him. He would not receive the word of the angel, so he was deaf. Therefore, he could not share this news. He could not tell his wife, Elizabeth. And so he was mute. Mary, on the other hand, she accepts the impossibility. And she simply 
ask for clarification. The earliest reports indicate that Mary was confused. Even in the presence of the archangel, she had questions. She needed time to process, to understand what was happening to her. But once she understood, she had made her decision. She closed her curtains, she closed her windows, her door and her house. This wasn't out of some kind of respect for the treasure hidden in her womb. She didn't light candles and put flowers in front of the tabernacle of her womb. She didn't spend day and night meditating on how wonderful and privileged she was. No, she closed her curtains and windows and doors in order to do something else. We know that she went to visit her Aunt Elizabeth. The incarnation was not and is not a simple private affair. Mary doesn't restrict herself to purely personal attitudes. Mary understood, as the angel had told her, that something far greater was at stake. The angel gave her child a name and a title of significance. Emmanuel, a name which means God with us. The angel called her child Jesus, which means Savior. The angel spoke of a child having an everlasting reign. Her thoughts as she walked that dusty road to her aunt's house must have been a blur of visions. As she walked, she must have seen the normal, everyday scenes of life playing out before her. Soldiers chasing people off the road so that they could pass. The rich full of contempt, avoiding the poor. And herself, a poor country girl being looked at and pushed around by the men around her. And so before she reached Elizabeth and poured out her Magnificat, she understood. She understood that the kingdom of her son would mean something drastically different to the world that she saw. She understood what it meant that she, of all people, was carrying the seed of all change in her womb. In the presence of Elizabeth and John, the one who would proclaim the coming of her son, Mary gave voice to that vision, the vision that she'd bottled up inside of her as she walked along that dusty road. She said, look at, what, look at what's happened to me. God is going to change the whole world. It is through me that God has shown how the world is going to change. And that's what Mary teaches us, that God isn't only going to change our private hearts, but he's also going to give peace of mind, that God will change the entire world. And so what she carried in her womb gave her a vision as wide as the world, and as lasting as history. This is our vision too, the vision that carries us and fills us today. Christ not only changes us, but through us, he will change the world. Mary saw a vision of peace and justice, the reign of the king of love. It changed her. May it change us too. Let us now profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered at Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And so, dear sisters and brothers, with Mary and Joseph, we know that all things are possible. And so we confidently ask the Lord to hear our prayers. that the servants of Jesus Christ will receive the Lord's blessing in living the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That pregnant women will receive the Lord's blessing in the birth of their children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those facing decisions about their future will receive the Lord's blessing in seeking God's will. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we who prepare to celebrate Christmas will receive the Lord's blessing in serving others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray with Pope Francis that volunteer non-profit organizations committed to human development find people dedicated to the common good and ceaselessly seek out new paths to international cooperation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of Mary and Joseph, and our God too, we ask you to answer these prayers. For we pray only that you will be done in us and through us. Let your blessing be powerfully present in every word we speak and in every action we perform for your glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, to become for us the bread of life. This is the earth for you. Well, the one, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, and will himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that will become for us our spiritual drink. This is your heart forever. Lord God, we plead with the gifts we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sin. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, 
almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mary longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his birth, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never stop gathering a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly pray, by that same Spirit, make holy these gifts that we bring to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all people, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink and this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, whose wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit, in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant prayers and your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, and Butitlachale, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have gathered here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, 
Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For it is through him and with him and in him and the unity of the Holy Spirit that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not in our sin, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. To share with one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's birth, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to give God glory with your lives. Thanks be to God.